Can you give us a perspective of how you're doing with reopening and demand? So remember, IMAX is a technology provider. We're in 81 countries around the world, and we don't own bricks and mortar, but we provide our technology solution, the IMAX experience, to exhibitors on a worldwide basis. So um, there's kind of been a rolling reopening. So China opened a couple of weeks ago with its first blockbuster called 800, and it did over $115 million and good numbers during the week. Then last weekend, Tenant reopened um, around the world except for China, Russia, and the United States. And as you say, it did $53 million. In both instances, IMAX was a very uh, healthy portion of the box office, more healthy than typical. So the takeaway is that where it's safe to open, people want to go to the theater, and they seem to be coming not just one time, but they seem to be changing their behavior a little bit and not all coming on Saturday nights and Friday nights, spreading out a little bit. What's the biggest drag right now, Rich, in your mind, as to what is kind of delaying the, um, the, the movie theater story? Uh, is it the lack of customers or is it the lack of movies to go and see? I think it's a little bit... Um, I'll get back to specifically what you're saying, but I think it has more to do with people adjusting. So there have been other kind of epidemics, not of this scale, before, and the behavior pattern is usually... They come back to some extent, but it takes a little while until it comes back fully. And when you said impediment, I think people are really coming now, but it's going to take a little time to come back at full capacity mm. based on what we've seen historically. But right now, it, it's almost a question of who will go first. Will the theaters open first or will the films open first? And there was kind of a stalemate where both were afraid to make the first move. And one thing um, that Warner Brothers and Tenet did, which was really intelligent, was instead of the traditional pattern where you'd wait for the whole world to be safe and then you'd open the world day and day, they said, wait a minute, there may never be a time that it all works perfectly. So let's do a rolling global opening and let's open where it's safe and continue to roll through the world in doing that. And right now that seems to be working. And the hope is that that gives comfort to some of the other studios and the other films and they open in a similar manner. So, so does that mean, Rich, that you don't expect 100 percent? Well, I guess when do you expect 100 percent capacity to return? Yeah, so right now, Capacity is around 50% in most markets. In China, it had been 25, and then it went up to 50, and now there are rumblings about it maybe going up more. In Canada, it was only 50 people a theater, which is one reason the IMAX numbers are so um, amazing, which is we did almost 10% of the global box office in this highly capacity-constrained way. But I think people are going to put their toe in the water. And they're going to see how it goes. And it's a little bit ironic because there have been no cases in the world, even though a lot of theaters have been open for a number of months, where with contact tracing, it's been traced back to a theater. But I think the governments want to just be certain. And there are a lot of safety protocols in place now, wearing masks, special cleaning, as you say, capacity limitations. And I think you'll see those open up. So. Uh, this weekend, Tenant opens in China, and I think a lot of people are focused on the U.S., but I think China is going to be a very strong market. Um, Nolan, IMAX, and, um, um, and, and, and Blockbusters all go well there. And I think, as I said, they're starting to think about more capacity open. So I don't think there's going to be a formula. I think it's going to be a case-by-case -case basis as the regulators feel comfortable. Rich, what's the shelf life of a movie? Let's take, for example, the new Bond movie. How long can you leave that on the shelf and expect it to deliver decent returns further down the road? Is there a point at which you've just got to get it out there? So that's a great question in terms of the pandemic now. So typically, the shelf life for IMAX is two or three weeks and then you move on. And in regular theatres, it's actually a shorter big play, but a longer tail, up to a couple months. But during the pandemic, because of the capacity restrictions, what we're starting to see the beginning of is not everybody has to go the first Saturday night hmm. or the first Friday night. And millennials may feel comfortable 
going to the theaters and you know with more of their friends and more people there on Saturday night but other people might say you know I'd rather go Wednesday morning so um, we think the legs are going to be longer um, Chris Nolan movies always have long legs um, historically but for all movies we think because human behavior will be different people won't be back at work some people won't be back at school so you don't have to wait till Friday or Saturday night so I think you're going to see during this period a longer um, legs but I think again when it gets back to normal whenever that is it'll probably go back to the historic norm. Uh, real quick as we end up here Mulan is going to stream on Disney Plus uh, over the weekend. Do you see more of that happening from Disney? I, I, on blockbusters no. I mean Disney was very clear in saying Mulan was a one off. I think they tried to redate it three times. They spent marketing money. They had a premiere months ago. And I think they just felt they couldn't afford another um, false start in terms of gearing up and the money and the audiences. So they did a logical thing for them. They moved it to PVOD and streaming. But they clearly said this is a one off. And we have a lot of movies in backlog with them terrific movies, Marvel uh, movies, inc including Black Widow and Eternals and a lot of other things. So I, I, I don't think you'll see this again.